Wow, did you see that professional um, transition right there? I'm hoping you're having a fantastic day on this Wednesday afternoon. It's hump day. Let's get it all right. If this is your first uh, lunch and learn with me, I would like you to enjoy the experience. For the next 30 minutes, you're going to be sitting here with myself, Prosper Taruvinga, the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital and the creator of the Online Prosperity Blueprint, your four-step system and guide to online prosperity. I would like to welcome you to this exciting episode where we're actually talking about... Um, you know, stuff that happens as entrepreneurs and how you can actually get seen, get known, and why being silent as a solo uh, entrepreneur is actually killing your business. All right. So obviously, um, as I'm talking here, I can understand and I can appreciate that if you are part of the people that are in my network or people that are my potential prospects, I know one thing for sure. I know right now you don't have any leads. You don't have any guaranteed income. You're probably studying everything to get ahead. You have no absolute system that you follow and you don't have an adequate process that you follow okay and um, some of the people that I have been um, getting into my ecosystem I can tell they don't have freedom they're tied up to their computer just to fulfill uh, tasks and they're alone and they don't have a network okay so obviously this is um, one of those shows where we try and help you to actually start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I noticed while I was talking, Trish tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Belinda is in the house and I also see Stephen Kelly is in there. Thank you. Thank you so much, every one of you guys um, for tuning in. So if any of the things that I mentioned a little bit earlier on, you know, the, the, the whole, that's how my avatar is created, by the way. I learn and I listen and I watch what everybody else is doing and I find out what is their burning issue and burning desire for them to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and every single day if I have time I will come through and then I'll have a chat about what I have noticed that needs to be done or what you can do for your business so that you can actually start getting profit, start getting the customers that you want and start retaining them, okay? Now, one of the biggest problems that I have been finding um, and noticing in my newsfeed and the people that I talk to and my clients, big and small, okay? Um, I've noticed that a lot of us don't quite realize what flavor entrepreneur we are. Okay, I'm going to retract and try and explain this in a little bit. Uh, Christopher, how's it going, my brother? Uh, Belinda, how are you? And I notice um, Marcelino is in the house. Dave Clapp, thanks for tuning in. Carly, so, um, Sylvana, thank you. Trish, my love, how are you? Dave Kaufman and Dr. Shami Mupan is also watching right now. Thank you so much, every one of you guys, for taking your time to check this out. Now, my biggest question is, can you type in the comments there, what flavor entrepreneur do you think you are? What sort of an entrepreneur do you think you are? All right. I will explain as we are going along. Oh, what is it that you do? Because entrepreneurship has changed over the years. Okay. Now, with, with the coming in of the internet and um, all the tools that we now have, it has actually become difficult to do business instead of making it a whole lot easier. I will explain. The first reason why I'm saying this is because, first of all, you don't have leads. Second of all, it's hard for you to be authentic these days. And third of all, even if you put out ads there, it's even harder and harder for you to even convert them. All right. That is because there is different flavors of entrepreneurship. All right. And all this modern technology is either making it harder or easier for some. And you get confused in the process as to how you two can actually start getting results. Now, Steve says um, you are deaf, great motivator and add quality to all your posts. Well done. Prosper. Thank you so much, Steve. And I hope you're feeling better. The other day I saw in your newsfeed that you were not feeling well. And um, I've got a trip lined up for Perth. I'll be in touch with you. All right. So. What I'm saying here is there's different categories of, you know, entrepreneurship and 
whatever business opportunity or businesses that have sprouted out because of the connectivity that we now have online, okay? Back in the time, all you had was your grandfather's grocer just down the road and everybody in the village knew what he was selling. Everybody in the village knew the, 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 the smith down the road who was responsible for making the horseshoes. Everybody in the village knew the cobbler who was responsible for making the boots. But now you can buy your shoes from Amazon. Now you can buy your shoes from Nike who has a factory in China and their sales office is in Singapore because the internet has made it so easy for people to be poor or for people to be rich, all right? And it's making it very hard every single day for people to be poor. But in the process, everybody else is just getting caught up, all right, in the whole entrepreneurship uh, demagogue and they don't quite know what flavor entrepreneur they are. Okay, so, you know, today there's solo entrepreneurs, all right? There's lifestyle entrepreneurs, all right? There's online entrepreneurs, there's freelancers, all right? And there's so much more. So the term small business owner has now evolved and it's morphed into this one big gigantic ball of fluff and a lot of people don't realize which part is theirs. All right. You see a person who calls themselves an entrepreneur, but they're a startup. They're an entrepreneur, but then they're looking for funding. You are a different kind of entrepreneur because you are funding your own enterprise. OK, so it's a whole different game ball. You need to figure out what lane you're in. You need to figure out what flavor entrepreneur you are. Because a copywriter is going to be a totally different person and the way they market their business uh, to somebody who is maybe a, a digital marketer. A, um, I really want to give examples on the fly, but it's, it's really difficult. You will see a dentist trying to do the same marketing strategies that a lawyer does. First of all, the people you're trying to attract are different genre of people, even though they're the same person, but they respond to information in a totally different way. So whenever you're going to be presenting yourself on the internet, figure out, who am I to these people I'm trying to attract? All right? So, yeah, Stephen says every business, big or small, is now a global business. Knowing who you are is key. Exacta mondo. And Steve, thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. All right. So the term small business has just come into life and a few people know exactly where to actually place themselves. That is what is creating the biggest, biggest, biggest confusion we're facing on the internet right now. Um, yesterday I was out and I was talking to a whole bunch of um, people that were filming me uh, while we we're doing an interview when I was out at Crown. There's a lot of publicity that's coming up as a result of things that I did last year and y'all are gonna be seeing that as we go. So each and every one of them was telling me, oh, I'm a freelancer and uh, my job is to maybe just hold the light or just hold the beam um, with the sound, etc., etc. So there was different people all doing a different particular job and they were all brought in as a freelancer that was contracted to come and work on that particular project. All right. Now, back in the time, that would have been one company that had hired all these people. All right. And all these different people that are coming in, they have come in to this project with their own skill set. Now, how they advertise themselves, how they got themselves there, that's for them to know. All right. Now, that's where my whole theory stems from. Some of them were on a roller decks. Some of them were on a website for freelancer.com, uh, which has to do with, um, you know, video and visuals and stuff like that. And some of them, um, you know, had worked with the, with the people that were on the shoot before. How are you creating and connecting those relationships that will call you for your expertise? Do people actually know what it is that you do? All right. So all of these things, the things that you should question yourself before you start putting stuff out there to say, you know what? I'm an entrepreneur. You know what? Let me. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing. Now, EJ says, just shared your video. EJ, thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate um, your stuff. Um, let me know if your uh, podcast with uh, 
Dubas comes out so that uh, maybe I can have a listen to it. All right. So now we've got access to our potential customers. We've got access to people that will pay us to stay in business. But how are we presenting ourselves to them? We need to be clear on what flavor entrepreneur we are so that we'll be more than, you know, we'll be more than equipped and more than prepared to serve these people when they come through our doorsteps. All right. And this is what a lot of people are missing out on the point. Yes, you might have a product. Yes, you might have a process. Yes, you might have a blueprint or you might have copied somebody else's stuff and you're putting it out there. But who are you in terms of what the customer understands you and they want to pay you as a doctor? Are they paying you as a consultant? What are they paying you as? All right. Now, once you start knowing what flavor entrepreneur you are, then you will find the people that will um, compensate your skill set. And once you find those people that compensate your skill set, because I as an individual or a client as an individual, I pay electricity, I pay gas, I pay for uh, for fuel, I pay for um, all the other services. And all these services are provided by different providers. I'm still the same customer and all these people are running a business servicing my needs. All right. So somebody out there is already servicing the customers that you're looking for. Have you, has that ever occurred to you that somebody out there is already getting money from your customers? What are you doing to present yourself so that you become the jelly or, you know, you, 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 you collaborate with those people that are already doing the same things that your customers want? All right. So it, it, it might just sound like all you got to do is put up a website or put up, you know, a Facebook page or just start running ads. But if you don't know what flavor entrepreneur you are, if you don't know what the market needs off of your skill set, if you don't know what the market needs of your services, I'll tell you something. You are paid in accordance with the value that you bring into the market. All right. And the market generally decides. The market generally decides who to pay and who to support. All right. And if you are not supporting the market, the market will never bring, give back to you in terms of their credit card. So at the end of the day, if you're not really specific what flavor entrepreneur you are and how you fit into the whole grand scheme of things, I think you're playing with yourself. All right. Okay. So it might sound like it's very easy to just show up on, um, on the internet and, 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 and put things out and, and, and just make sure people know and like and trust what you're doing. But who are you? What are you there for? Why should people care? All right. And now Sohil says, awesome work, brother. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much for tuning in, brother. Thank you so much. Erica, how's it going? I wish I could say stuff in Swedish. All right. So it takes a lot to start and grow a business okay you're not just gonna go out and start it off on your own and just blame everything else around you because maybe you're following the wrong people or you just don't know what it is what is your service what's your purpose and who should care about it if you're not exactly clear about what you're doing i think you're not gonna get anywhere and you will just be one of those people that has run and it then just works out as You've wasted a lot of time, money, and effort, and people's hopes and dreams. Every day that I wake up, I know that people's hopes in terms of, you know, their marketing, in terms of their business, in terms of their revenue, depends on me showing up. All right? So what are you doing for you to have a market that actually can't live without your work in order for you to continuously work tomorrow? Okay, so you got to really have a strong mindset and be determined to push through any failure or any struggle. Otherwise, don't even attempt. The thing is, you might feel like today this video is demotivating, but yesterday really showed and opened up a lot of things for me. Um, we, we, we really, really do get caught up in our businesses. And we when we go out, that's when we start seeing, oh my God, okay, this has to function. This person has to be there in order to, to, to do this. This driver has to be there at this particular time in order to drive this bus to this particular point. And this taxi driver has to be. So there's a lot that is happening to make sure that your business eventually ends. So you got to go out of the frame in order for you to see the big picture. All right. 
What flavor entrepreneur are you and how is your work fitting into the grand scheme of things? Why do you think you are needed? All right. So that's the reason why now sometimes some people just feel like because entrepreneurship is not the only dream, guys. I, I, I feel like I think this needs to be put out there because a lot of people are really going at it. And first of all, they haven't really worked in a normal business environment to actually see what it means, what it takes to actually run a business. All right. So they don't really quite know what is expected of them or what do clients expect of them. Or oh, the best yet is when clients sign up to them, they don't know what to do with them because all they're doing all the time is like being the Jehovah's Witnesses, knocking on people's doors and people saying no. And when the people open up, they're like, oh, snap, what do we say now? Do you know what I mean? So people are not prepared from the procedures, from their steps on how they can actually, you know, you get those clients and keep them and eventually show them that they're the person to solve the, those people's problems. So like I said, it takes a great deal, a great deal to start and grow a business. All right. And if you don't know what flavor entrepreneur you are, if you cannot show what it is that you are doing in the market, don't expect the market to pay you cents. All right. Don't expect the market to pay you Jack didn't. All right. So this is something that I feel like each and every one of us should really, really put into consideration right now. What am I? Am I a solopreneur or is my service coming in as a lifestyle entrepreneur? Am I an online business entrepreneur to help other businesses? Or am I a freelancer that can work within, um, you know, teams or with, that can work with other companies? How are you presenting yourself out there when people know that and when you're clear about what it is that you serve, who you want to serve and why they should care? That's when the magic starts happening. That's when you start having the collaborations that you need to actually put you in front of your customers because somebody out there is also billing your customers. You're just not putting yourself out there enough. All right. So, yeah, like I said, it does take a great deal to 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 start a business and the, there's going to be struggle. There's going to be um, a whole lot of burnout, but also the burnout is as a result of you trying to just be an entrepreneur and not quite know what you're enterprising in. You know what I mean? And burnout happens when you've lost the purpose because once you lose the, 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 the will to want to do anything, you don't have the energy enough to do it. And eventually that's where burnout comes in. That's the reason why I show up every single day and um, or, 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 um, for 30 minutes. You know why? Because I know somebody out there will get value from what I say. And that motivates me and that gives me the energy to go through. Now, Steven says everybody should be perfect, should perfect their elevator pitch. Who knows who you will meet next? Steve, that's actually a really, really good one. You know, you can look this up. A friend of mine uh, today, Troy uh, Asayon, uh, wrote about how... Ortiz, I think his name was um, Graham Ortiz or Elisha, Elisha Ortiz, the guy who invented the Ortiz elevator. You know, he wanted to show people how he um, he can stop elevators at faster speed because when they invented the elevator, it had no brakes. So in the event that maybe the ropes snapped, you know what I mean? The elevator would crash land and then it would hurt the people and people were very skeptical about going into elevators before 1852. Now, this gentleman, Elisha Ortiz, um, invented now the brakes for the elevator so that if the elevator was going to crash land real fast, it would stop in, in mid motion and people did not believe him. Just like anything else in life, nobody believes the pioneers. Nobody believes those people that start off first because you know what? They had not defined who they are, who exactly they are. So Elisha decided to go to the town hall. All right. That town hall where all the people in the in the in the city and all the naysayers co congregated and he built a shaft that, um, you know, resembled an elevator. So what then happened is he asked his assistant, Elisha asked his assistant to cut the rope. That was like 100 meters um, of a fall. If that elevator would have crushed, he would have died. But he showed people in broad daylight 
you know, what was actually happening and, and how his new invention was going to stop the elevator in mid motion. All right. So in front of all those people, in front of everyone that was watching, he managed to stop that elevator in broad daylight. That's what was now called the elevator pitch. So you gotta have a pitch that actually shows and tells what it is that you do. Because if you don't know what you do, if you cannot show or explain to people what exactly is happening or how you can solve their problems, nobody's gonna follow you. All right. So thank you, Steve, for bringing that up. And I hope I didn't butcher that story. Um, Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's it's one of those things that you know you just caught me on a whim, but. At the end of the day, you really, really have to show and figure out what flavor entrepreneur are you and then decide how your expertise is going to gel in with what's already in the market. Because what I see right now, this whole entrepreneurial phase is a time when, say, back in the time when people were, were going to war. All right, people were going to war and, 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 and everybody was being called in. Okay, come in, everybody has to be a soldier. Nobody knew where they were going to be deployed. Nobody knew if they were going to be the front runners. Nobody knew if they were going to be the guys with the guns. Nobody knew if they were going to be working at the base. They all just jumped into the lorries and went to war. This is exactly what entrepreneurship is now. It's a phase where everybody's just jumping in, but they're not figuring out what my duty is, who am I serving, and why should they care? And that's the reason why your stuff is not moving. And that's the reason why you're burning out because you're not being clear as to what flavor entrepreneur are you? Are you willing to do it for 10 years? Are you willing to do it for five years? Or do you just want to be an overnight success, which I can guarantee you it's not going to work. All right. So do you know what I mean? Everything that you are going to be doing from day one is going to be directly impacting your main goal. Once you figure out what flavor entrepreneur you are, every single thing that you do is building up towards where you want to go. There's so much that you can do every day, you know, when you're a founder of a company or when you're a founder of a startup or a founder of your own business. And it's easy for you to actually start getting lost. And that's why a lot of people follow shiny objects. Because they are not certain, they are not sure what it is exactly they want to achieve at the end. All right. So just like a GPS, you put in the end uh, address and then it, you know, it, it self navigates or it reverse engineers to where you are. And then even if you turn, it recalibrates and goes in there. So if you've got the end in sight, every single thing that you're going to do is going to build up. So if you know what flavor entrepreneur you are, you would know if what you're doing takes a year, takes five years, takes 20 years, takes 30 years. And then once you know that, you no longer have what I call CA, which is a crisis of anticipation. You know, you no longer anticipate results tomorrow. You just start working. You no longer have burnout. You start attracting the people that you need in your business. All right. I talked about a story about how I went out yesterday and people that were working as a team were all just freelancers that were brought together just because of a project to interview me. All right. So what does that mean? Those people have put in the groundwork. Somebody already knows who they are from years back for them to be called in for that particular event yesterday. Now, what are you doing today to to make sure that your your name is known when somebody is thinking in five years, when somebody is thinking in four years? Because if you're just going to be a one click wonder. Nobody's going to remember you in a year. Nobody's going to remember you in five years. So for you to avoid the crisis of anticipation, figure out what flavor entrepreneur am I? All right. Am I just in it to just sell my business at the end or am I doing it for legacy or am I just becoming a freelancer hoping that maybe if I work really hard, this company is going to hire me that my friend will help you in the long run and you will actually start carving and start doing business in a way that will actually be fulfilling to yourself. You would exactly start knowing what groups to join because right now you're probably enlisted with 600 groups, some of which you don't even go into because, you know, first of all, you were maybe 
the, the, the call to action got you to sign in there, but it's not what you want. It's not the flavor. You, 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 it's not the people you want to hang around in there. Maybe the people are way advanced than you, or maybe the people are way below you, or the people are on the same level and you don't see like you're growing, all right? So if you don't know where you stand, if you don't know what the market is responding to, to pertaining to your particular message and your particular business, then I think you're just playing with yourself. All right, you need to figure out what flavor entrepreneur you are. You know why? Because then you will find your tribe. You will find your people. You will find your customers and they would find you. Because everybody's tired of one click wonders. I mean, how many times do you see a grand opening, grand closing? Because people are not focused enough or don't even know what it is that they're doing. They just think, okay, oh yeah, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'll listen to Gary Vaynerchuk and then just hustle, hustle, hustle and forget my family and forget my life. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, entrepreneurship, I'm just a statistic. Don't be like that. Don't be a one click wonder. Stop complaining when you see other people doing well because you don't know where they've been. You don't know who, who is supporting them, all right? You don't know what, what resources they have. So if you see somebody doing well in, in your newsfeed, focus on you. Focus on what flavor entrepreneur you want to be. That way you would know where your GPS is going and it will recalibrate you back to position one. Because you lose focus and once you lose focus, you burn out. Have you ever noticed if you're running in a marathon, if you're the first one, you never get tired. But if you're the last one, you're like, uh, why am I even bothering? You know? Have you ever seen the people that are in front are always like, you know what, let's do this. And if you start becoming your own competition, if you start sowing the seeds, because whatever you do today will have repercussions tomorrow. Or whoever you meet or whoever you, 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 you talk to and however you, you build your business, because... The, the more you work, the harder it will be for you to quit. People quit because they haven't put in anything. You know, can you imagine if you've worked for three, four years and you see the, the pile is there and then all you just need is to go up there. You wouldn't quit. You put in all the work. But if you don't see the top or if you don't see where you're going or if you don't see who else is in your um, industry or if you don't see the results of what you're supposed to become, that's when you burn out. All right. So at the end of the day, it's, it's just one of those things. It's, it's not your fault or, or anything. You just got to figure out what flavor entrepreneur are you. That way, it will be easy for you to, to, to know how you want to tackle this whole entrepreneurship thing is. There's solopreneurs. There's lifestyle entrepreneurs. There's um, freelancers, you know, and some people start, you know, all those other funny businesses that I absolutely do not want to talk about, but there's that too. All right. So the Tim small business has just come to life and you know, it, it's, it's finding people new and exciting ways to make money online, usually doing what they love, but, but without a proper plan, without proper structure, Without knowing the kind of focus you actually need to be doing, without knowing the flavor entrepreneur you're supposed to be, all of this will be a high sounding nothing. All right? The internet is here to help you. You've got access to potential customers from all over the world. The internet has actually made it so easy and Looking at Facebook's way of doing things is making it harder and harder for people to become poor. It's very difficult these days for anyone to be poor. Like, tell me, if, if, you, if you're going to be looking to start a business, you can start a page and, and just really start connecting, creating and relating to people. What could stop you from actually, you know, you know making transactions? You need to step back and start figuring out where do I want this to go before you start, you know, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right. At the end of the day, the reason why a lot of people then give up is because they end up working alone. The reason why they work alone is because they have no customers, they have no support around them, they become a lone wolf entrepreneur. And usually lone wolves are usually the, 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 the most destructive because they think everything is out there to, to, to hurt them. 
But if you open up yourself, if you join the right groups, if you join the right customer network, if you service the right kind of customer, everything becomes a breeze. My test to, to see if this person, I can work with them is, I've got a two-year-old daughter. If I can leave my little girl with them while I go to another meeting, that's my test to see if I can work with that person. Not necessarily saying I will leave my daughter with them, but if they're a really nice person that I can trust them with my biggest prizes possession, then I can work with that person. The internet has opened up so many avenues that you can attract the right kind of people you really want to work with. But you need to figure out who you are in order for you to shine out to the, to the world out there. All right? So don't be a constant lone, um, you know, entrepreneur who's just slowly dying inside because of isolation instead of, of winning. Connect, learn, grow, and you will help others and you will then get back what you actually put in. But you will only know what to give or how to connect with other people if you know what flavor entrepreneur you are. Entrepreneurship is not the only dream, guys. That's a fact. And I think Gary V talks about if, you know, number 52 at Facebook is doing far better than all the other number ones in other industries. So figure out if this is your thing, actually, you know. And once you do, find out what flavor you're going to be. Are you going to be a solopreneur? Are you going to free, be a freelancer that works in unison with other businesses in order to get the clients? Are you going to be that one-stop shop? Are you going to be an affiliate, et cetera, et cetera? You know, there are many ways to, to keep, um, you know, connected and inspired. All right. If you use some of what I mentioned here, guys, you will figure out some of your own and how you literally can become the best version of what you are right now. You just got to be, do and have the things that you want to do in order to fulfill your dreams. All right. Be already who you want to be by knowing what flavor entrepreneur you want to be. All right, start doing the things in order for you to have those things that will then uh, guarantee your success. All right, so don't let the feeling of isolation keep you from creating a business and life that is profitable and enjoyable. If you really enjoyed this uh, show today, please share it. And after you've shared it, maybe let's continue the conversation in the bottom there. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in and um, hopefully we catch up again tomorrow.